supposed to be. So this is this concludes the you know the discussion about Hajj, and then Allah Azza wa Jalla goes straight to corrupt people, corrupt people and their status, you know what they have what they have in this life and how it might be impressive to you. So he goes straight. And among the people, there's someone whose words impress you in worldly life. Like the, he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, some ulama say this is about Akhnas ibn Shuraiq, who used to come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and claim that he believes and he's with the Muslims. And when he would turn around, he would create all kinds of problems for Muslims. He would even, in, in one case, he even destroyed somebody's livestock. And that's what some say this is referring to because it says, You know, he, he destroys farmland and nestle and, and, and the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the livestock, etc. But others say this is actually even general. There's a person who on their face value is trying to impress you with how religious they are, how good they are. But on the inside, they're totally corrupt. And behind the scenes, they're totally corrupt. So they have a face before the religious community and they have a different personality in their business life, in their professional life. They're a completely different person. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ He test he makes Allah a witness. He brings Allah as a witness in whatever's in his heart. I swear to Allah, I really believe in you. You know, and this, I've talked to you guys about this before, and it's coming up here again. The idea of someone who swears a lot to convince you, someone who swears a lot to convince you of something, that's actually a very telling sign that they're not honest. You know the car salesman that swears a lot? I swear this is the best deal you're ever going to find in your life. Leave the dealership. <laughs> if you hear that, just the more he swears, I swear to my mother, I swear to my life, I tell you, you know, you're missing out. I'm looking out for you. <laughs> you, just, you walk away from that one. You know? And you learn this even early on. Children that do messed up things. Children will come up to you and say, I swear I didn't hit him. I didn't even ask. Why are you swearing? Uh, it's guilty conscience. Is something inside him. So he feels the need. He knows that his words themselves are not enough. His previous credibility, lack of credibility makes, it, makes his words empty. So he has to reinforce his words with something extra. And that is an oath, swearing. So he makes Allah, Allah is witness. I really do believe. And this comes in Surah, Munaf, Surah Munafiqun. You know? قَالُوا نَشْهَدُوا إِنَّكَ لَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ So emphatically they say you're the messenger of Allah. Why do they feel the need to say it so much? Emphasize it so much? Because this is, this is the nature of their, their lack of character. So he very, you know, very impressively, and Allah has already said he's very eloquent, well-spoken. Why? يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ The messenger is impressed with his speech. He's very eloquent. On top of that, he's swearing and emphasizing on what is in his heart, how sincere he is. And Allah adds, وَهُوَ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ He's the worst kind of enemy and the worst kind, our most argumentative person. I'll give you a picture of this, what this is referring to. This Qur'an is full of psychological depiction. Personality traits, character traits. You'll see these people that are TV personalities. And they're very eloquent. They're very eloquent. Even religious, like, you know, ministers. And in like some Muslim countries, they have these guys that give, you know, talk shows. And they're very like, over the top, dramatic when they speak. And they're really like, flowery in their speech. And sometimes they're caught off camera. Like they don't realize they're on camera. And they're talking to their crew. Or they're talking to the producer or something. And you will hear the worst language come out of them. The nastiest, you would not think that's the same guy that was just praised the Lord a couple of minutes ago when the lights camera action was on. It's a different person altogether. You don't know, he's able to put on a show. He's able to put on a show. And these people when they get exposed, they have to run all kinds of hoop. You know, I, this voice isn't mine, it was dubbed or this is that. Actually a funny incident like that, that happened recently, my dad was telling me about on some Pakistani TV show or something, some religious program, this guy's always like singing the sheets and praising, you know, and then he got caught off camera, <laughs> like cursing somebody out, and they put it on YouTube or something, <laughs> you know, this, this, this idea, I'm not saying he's a munafiq, but I am saying there is a phenomenon of people that are very eloquent on the one hand, very impressive with their speech, but don't judge them by that. This brings us to a very important point, the last point I'll make for the, today. Muslims, us, especially the Muslim masses, not the leaders, the masses. We have to understand the difference between righteousness and a good message. In other words, the imam, the speaker, myself, others, whoever may be that's giving a reminder, they're giving a reminder for themselves and others. But our reminders are not a testimony to our character. You know what happens in a Muslim community? All of us, we give each other benefit of the doubt. 
I assume about you that you're not a sinful person. You assume about me that I'm not a sinful person. And that's the mercy of Allah, He covers our sins. All of us make mistakes, all of us are human beings. But you know what happens unfortunately in certain religious cultures, and it's happening in the Muslim tradition too? We look at our religious leadership and we assume that they are angels. We assume that they, they are not human beings like us. They don't have arguments at home. They never get angry. They never get impatient. You know, they never make a mistake. They never fall. And if, they, if you do find them falling, you're like, Astaghfirullah, this guy, he gives a talk over there and look at him. You know, he called foul on me on the basketball court. It wasn't even a foul. You know, this, and he, he's going to teach tafsir or something. You know what I'm saying? What happens is we put unrealistic expectations on people who present Islam. This is, this is very important to understand. People who are speaking on behalf of deen are not above anybody else. We're all on the same field. We're all on, this, on a level playing field. There's a one brotherhood. And to create a celebrity culture where we elevate these people so high that they, they start feeling awkward. Like I, I don't want to name the town because I don't want to embarrass the people. I went to a town last week and I really, I genuinely felt awkward. Because there was, oh brother, brother, please have a seat in the front. No, 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 we brought you like, they brought me like eight things of chocolate milk <laughs> for breakfast. I was like, who's this for? A sheikh, you should want you to be. I was like, first of all, not a sheikh. Second of all, stop being weird. Stop, just be normal, dude. You don't have to do all this. No, 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 this is the least we can do. No, no, this is way more than you should do. And it's not just, I, I feel like, you know, in Urdu there's this fake takalluf thing. Nay, nay, please, please. Chorne, chorne. Kya zarurat hai? But we actually mean nay or lao, or lao, right? <laughs> that's, that's how you translate that. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this is not just harmful for me, it's also harmful for you. This attitude is harmful for you. Because it creates this idea that these people, they're supposed to, you know, they're held to a high standard, not us. They're the ones that, you know, we're, we're the sinful scum. The least we can do is serve them. And maybe by serving them, that'll count as a good deed. No, it won't. We have to have respect for our ulama, our teachers. That's beautiful. It's wonderful. But it has its limits. And we shouldn't use that as a scapegoat to not do our job. You know, the best thing you can do for our leaders, our ulama, our speakers, our da'is, make dua for them, especially dua for their sincerity. That's the thing that's in danger every time they grab a mic. Every time. Every conference they go to, every halaqa they give, every class they teach, the thing that's being challenged is their sincerity. Every time somebody comes and says to the Imam, this is the best khutbah I've ever heard in my life, you did not do him a favor. You didn't. You just actually messed him up. And he has to just, no, shuk shukran. It's awkward. Like, what's he going to say? No, brother, don't say that. Astaghfirullah. And this guy's going to be like, I thought he was a nice guy. And now he just yelled at me in front of everyone. So you put him in an awkward situation. But we, we, have to, we, we have to, good speech is good speech. And the opposite of that is true too. Even if you hate somebody, you can't stand that guy. And he got up, got up and he grabbed the mic and he started talking. Like, I don't have to listen to this guy. I know what he's really like. You know? We hear the speech. If it's got something good in it, we take it. Who are we to judge people? Even if you don't like what the person did in some other instant, that one action doesn't define a person. If actions define people, then we have a right to judge Umar bin al-Khattab from his pre-Islamic life. Actions don't define people. People can be above their actions. They can become different people. They can transform. So we take the good, but we don't necessarily wholeheartedly accept. We don't create the, you know, the, the, the Pope culture. And we don't create the, you know, the, the, the minister culture. We don't create that. We don't help become a part of that. And on the, on the other hand, we don't become dismissive of people that we don't approve of. They don't meet our super righteous standard. So we can't even take anything from them. Al-Hikmatu Dalatul Mu'min. Wisdom is the lost treasure of the believer. We take it from wherever we can get it. Even if it's your non-Muslim professor taught you something, you take it. It's fine. So long as there's an element of truth in it, we're grateful to learn. So may Allah Azza wa Jal bless us with you know, clear thought and not be able to cloud our judgment of ideas and our judgment of our, our behavior towards each other in a way that's harmful to one another. May Allah Azza wa Jal protect all of us from nifaq. We'll, I'll end conclude with that. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.